Kamusta everyone? And this is the How to Play series. The How to Play series. This is the How to Play series. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. The Witcher has been in rising popularity these past few years, even more so since the release of the Witcher Netflix series. And because of that, a lot of people are starting to gain attention on this and is considering playing the video games. For most people, they were introduced to the games with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, some through The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, but very rarely do people start playing the games with the first one in the series, 2007's The Witcher Enhanced Edition. And I understand why, it's clunky, the mechanics feels off, and the pacing of the game just doesn't feel right. And because of that, a lot of people who tried playing this game quit even before reaching the second act of the game. I finished the game on hard difficulty, and if you're not sure if this game's worth playing, I highly suggest that you watch my video on should you play The Witcher Enhanced Edition before watching this video. If you, however, are sure on starting a playthrough on this, just know that this game might not be what you think it is. And so, to help you guys if those are planning to try this game for yourselves, I made this video. The rules, the guidelines, or simply the do's and don'ts. Why did I say it like that? Anyway, this is... The Witcher is an action role-playing video game developed by CD Projekt Red and published by Atari on Microsoft Windows. It's based on the novel series of The Witcher by Pauli Schotter and Andrzej Sapkowski. I really hope that I've said that right. The story takes place in a medieval fantasy world and follows Geralt of Rivia, one of the few traveling monster hunters who have supernatural powers, known as witchers. It was praised with its deep storytelling and the focus on choice rather than simple hack and slashing. The game's system of moral choices as part of the storyline was noted for its time delayed consequences and the lack of black and white morality, meaning there's no good and evil, just choices and consequences. It has a mature team, and you'll encounter a lot of these as you play the game, and because of this, I highly advise that you think about your choices carefully before you start making rash decisions. Before playing the game, it's wise to have a good mindset before you start playing. If you get into the game with the wrong mindset, I promise you, you will not like the game, and that will pretty much hinder you from learning the game's mechanics from that point on. And even if you do, you will not like the experience. So again, I highly, highly advise that you just sit down and forget about all the other Witcher games you've seen and played before you start a playthrough on the Witcher Enhanced Edition. With that out of the way, here is the basics. Like I said, the Witcher Enhanced Edition does not play like its predecessors. There's no active dodge, no active parries, and no button mashing. It's not your typical RPG either, so there's no character creation, for obvious reasons, no different classes, and no new equipable loot. There is, but there isn't. More on that later. I'll focus on the three biggest aspects of the game. Combat, character creation, what? Character progression, and alchemy. But before that, here's a quick explanation of the game's overbearing UI. It's not your standard hack and slash action game. It's half of that and half rhythm game. It plays off with the Witcher fighting style from the books. And while it did succeed in making it feel as close to the books as possible, while having it somewhat fun, it can get pretty repetitive as you play through it, especially in the first hours of the game. You have to click on an enemy once you see the orange indicator given by the sword you have in your hand. Or once you hear the sound, you'll be hearing that a lot. So remember, if you see this or hear the sound, that means the next Next combo is, well, next, and you will have to left click on an enemy to continue the rhythm. Click too soon or too late and the combo breaks, which consecutively leave you open to attacks. It's a lot more simpler than I make it sound, but trust me, it's not that hard sometimes. You'll start with a few combos at the beginning, but as you go through it and level up Geralt, you'll start to unlock more powerful and longer combos. So there's that. The attack styles are differentiated with two sword types, steel sword attacks and silver sword attacks, steel for humans and silver for monsters. You can use steel swords on monsters and vice versa, but it won't be as effective as opposed to using the proper sword. There will be moments that you'll forget about what sword you're using once you're in combat, so always check what sword you have in your hand. For every sword type, there are three attack styles that can be used with it. 
strong, fast, and group. Strong attacks are used for larger and or slower enemies. Usually when they have a shield, huge armor, or is generally larger than you, strong attacks will cut through them. Use fast attacks on less geared opponents or enemies that act fast and precise. Enemies that use daggers or small monsters in general belong in this category. Group attacks, however, are interesting in which they would only work on very specific instances. But basically, this attack style is mostly used to damage multiple enemies within a small area next to you. Now, changing swords while in combat takes quite a while and should be done with caution. Switching combat style, however, is fast and easy, assuming you have the right sword equipped. Always switch attack styles for every enemy that you are matched against. You will have to be able to switch attack styles as you go, and don't be afraid to disengage if you find yourself overwhelmed. That's normal. You are a witcher, not a ninja, not a fighter, and certainly not a warrior. You go in, kill one enemy, and go out. It's a good idea to tin the enemies first before you start killing the harder enemies. Every move and every action should be done with care and precision. Along with swordsmanship, there are spells that you can use in the game specifically for Geralt. These are signs. In The Witcher, Geralt can do magic, but in a form of signs. While magic in other games can be extremely powerful and can be used almost endlessly, here, not so much. There are five in the game, and this is what it all does. Yard. Yard? Is that how you pronounce it? Yard. Yard? Yard. Yard is the force spell. It's the first sign you'll learn and it can be used to give distance to you and your enemies, knock them down, or even stun them for an easy kill. Take note that the sign itself ain't designed to do much damage, but rather is used as some sort of disengage. Quen is a defensive sign. It creates a shield around Geralt that temporarily makes him invulnerable to damage, but is cancelled if you attack or use another sign. It's a lifesaver sign that is mainly used when drinking potions in combat and running away from dangerous fights. Yirden is used to create magical traps. I personally never really bothered to use this as there were only very few occasions that this might be needed, at least for me, and I played it on hard difficulty. I could be wrong however, so I'll just explain what it does. It creates a symbol on the ground which damages and slows enemies who pass over it. It can be upgraded to deal more damage, but really, I would rather just use my sword to kill my enemies rather than just run around as bait. Igni creates a small burst of fire in front of you, dealing some damage to foes. This sign is initially very weak, and because of that, I also rarely use this, unless the enemies I encounter are specifically weak against fire. While it can be upgraded over time, again, I would rather just use my sword to fight my enemies than rely on one skill. But that's just me. Axe is used to make enemies temporarily fight for you, making it useful when fighting large group of enemies. Again, I also rarely use this. I feel like as long as you know when to engage and disengage, you'll be fine. Signs are mostly used as secondary abilities to help in conjunction to your swordsmanship. All these signs are useful in their own way. Don't neglect using them just because I did. I found out that some people manage to beat the game focusing on signs alone, so keep that in mind. Once you have a sign equipped, you can activate it by right-clicking again. This will use up endurance and can be easily depleted. Again, keep that in mind. I say again and keep that in mind a lot. Hmm, I should keep that in mind. <laughs> what? This is the Witcher Hero skill, 3. Every time you level up, you get a skill point that you can use to enhance one of the Witcher abilities in the Hero board. I'm not really sure if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm going with. It's divided into attributes, signs, steel sword, and silver sword. And I'm telling you right now, you don't need all of this. In fact, the only ones you need to worry about are these. You can focus on being a magical Witcher by focusing on intelligence and sign branches. It's possible, but I suggest not doing this unless you're positively sure you know what you're doing, or if this is your second playthrough. The skills are pretty self-explanatory, but I also suggest that you follow this guide. It's pretty lengthy, and to be honest, I didn't really need it, and if you play on normal difficulty, there's a good chance that you won't either, but it can help you get a better understanding on what each skill does. I can't put it here, I can, but that would take a very, very long time, and well, yeah. 
Now, a good rule of thumb is to just focus on skills that make you harder to hit for survivability and skills that add power to your attacks for more damage. Don't think about the signs too much or at all if you're not planning on being a full spellcaster. Cause you'll only get a limited amount of skill points and if you invest too broadly, you might not get the result you want. And of course, as with any Witcher game, there's alchemy. Alchemy is used to craft all the present potions, oils, and bombs found in the game. But here's the thing. Thing? Thing. F is that what? Even if you're planning on playing this game on hard difficulty, you're only really gonna need this on specific points in the game. And if you do focus on this, the effects of having too many potions on your system would just outright kill you. In the 21 potions you can make, these are the only ones that are useful most of the time. And the oils are so specific that you're only gonna need them when you know you're gonna be fighting that specific monster. And bombs? Well their bombs. Again, all these items are all useful and are all self-explanatory, and you might want to try them all out. But like I said, these are the ones that you'll mostly use for the whole playthrough. There's a quick tutorial on how to make potions and oils upon the start of the game, but it's so simple that you might accidentally waste resources as you make your potions, oils, and bombs. I myself had a really hard time on this on my first hours of the game, so I'll link the video I watched here. I highly suggest that you watch her video on this as she tackles the whole alchemy system in less than 10 minutes, and I think that if I did make one, it wouldn't be as good as what she's done. So there you go. Features now, I wouldn't really call a tutorial a feature by itself, but when it comes to especially niche games like this, a tutorial is something you really need, and luckily, it has one. In the first few hours of the game, mainly the prologue, you'll get the tutorial, and I'm telling you right now, that tutorial is key. The basic mechanics of the game can be summarized with that tutorial alone. Give it a lot of time and make sure you understood everything you did there before you go on to Act 1. You'll know when the tutorial is about to end. Whenever you level up or use the alchemy system, you're gonna need to meditate. To do that, you're gonna have to find a bed, an inn, or my personal favorite, a fireplace. Find a fireplace, stand next to one, and you can perform meditation. Meditating will remove all the toxins from your body, potion effects assuming you meditate for a long time, and it can regenerate your health as time passes. A day-night cycle exists in this game, and specific enemies and quests won't be available unless you're in the right time of day. There's dawn, noon, dusk, and night. Meditating will speed up this cycle. Choices and consequences exist in the game too, and yes, they do matter if you want your playthrough to be somewhat unique. Your decisions will shape the story as you go on, and it's not your standard good versus evil, so treat your decisions wisely. Now, whether you like this or not is completely up to you, but if you're into that, well, there you go. It can get very limiting if you like to loot every single thing that you can get your hands on, so I don't know if that helps. Also, when it comes to gear, you will rarely have to equip new weapons until the last two chapters of the game and the same goes for armor. So don't buy weapons and armor. True to the Witcher fandom, the game includes a lot of references to the books. References that you might miss if you skipped reading them. For most people, it's fine. But if you, however, like me, are bothered by those, for example, I played every single numbered Final Fantasy game before playing the Cydia, or every single Resident Evil game before playing Resident Evil 6, yeah, that might be a problem. Or maybe I have a problem. Do I really need to explain this? It has mature love scenes. That's it. The game design oozes with passion. CD Projekt Red was obviously a fan of the books and was probably using everything they've learned in the books to craft this game, from combat to quest design. Yes, it can get really annoying, but it's better than playing, let's say, Mass Effect Andromeda where the gameplay sucked because the people behind it also, well, you know. You can carry over your save to The Witcher 2. Most people who are playing this game are probably playing this game because of this, so keep your save games. I feel like I've explained everything about this game, or everything that mattered anyway. Time for my favorite part, the tips and tricks. The Witcher Enhanced Edition is a flawed masterpiece, and while it's made by one of the best game developers slash publishers right now, at the time, it was their first game, and with that came dozens of problems. And so, here's a list of all the tips and tricks I've gathered, thought of, and found online. Swallow is one of the best potions in the game. They heal a lot and it's worth investing time on while not in combat. If you are in combat, 
try to make it that you won't need them. Track quests by going to the journal and selecting track this quest. The questing system in this game can be very annoying. It's hard to know when or where the quests are and it's hard to know when you actually did some progress. Try your best to understand the quest requirements and if you still find yourself in a bind, don't be afraid to google it. Just don't look too far into it. Control plus left click allows you to automatically loot everything on a plant or corpse. I wish I knew this as I was playing the game, only found this out as I was writing the script. This could have saved me a lot of time. Meditate to find missing monsters or NPCs. If you cannot find an NPC, try meditating at a campfire to a different point of the day and see if they appear where they're supposed to. Choosing the fast style or group style for silver or steel swords will allow Geralt to run faster than usual. Not really sure if this is just me seeing things, but it certainly feels fast. Act 1 is huge. Ish. Once you get past the prologue, you'll be thrown into this pretty big area right away. Its size might seem a little daunting, so try to just run around for a bit. Explore it slowly and do it in the day if you want to avoid fighting enemies. Talk to people. Almost everybody has something to say, which will help you understand what's going on and who you are. Obviously, it also helps during quests. Don't skip conversations. Sometimes it's tempting to just click away during a lengthy conversation, but you never know what you'll be skipping. You won't be any less confused if you skip everything somebody has to say. If you find that you just don't know who people are, what things are, and why things happen, have a look at the information tab in the journal. You'll find basic info on characters and a quick explanation on the Witcher world and lore. Quests can be done in multiple stages. The story has lots of twists and turns, but you can look at previous stages of the quest in order to remember what you've already done. To do this, just open the quest tab of the journal and have a look on what it has to say. This game, unfortunately, involves a lot of running back and forth across large areas. Try to look at your quests and see if there are any in the same area, so you can do them all at the same time. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Don't get caught up over picking up every single piece of food and drink in the game. I did this a lot early on in the game and it was just a waste of time. There's just too much and they're pretty much negligible, especially if you're just playing on normal. Alcohol is only useful if you plan on getting drunk on purpose to give to a friend or as a base for alchemy. Other than that, they're pretty much useless. The best thing you can do is save up all the alcohol with a strong potion base and use it for making potions. The potion system can seem overwhelming, but they're only needed on hard difficulty. It helps but it's not really necessary. Books are a big part of the game. You'll basically get three kinds of books, each with different icons. Generic ones are there just to add stuff to the glossary. Glossary? Glossary. They're there for you to read, which is fun, but useless gameplay-wise. The ones that matter are those that add info to bestiaries. Beastery? <laughs> Come on. Basically, anything that adds information to monsters or plants, those are the ones that are useful. Try to collect as much gold as you can get to use on books or other materials, but mostly books. Meteorite ores and runes can be used to upgrade swords. I suggest that you only do this around chapter 4 and 5 as you'll mostly only need it by then. Okay, listen up. Collect all the romance cards. It's not really necessary, but it's really fun. I, I was gonna add some sort of Pokemon theme song on this, but that would just demonetize me. Not because of the song, but because of what it could represent. The best way to earn money in my opinion is dice poker. I found it really fun and you can just save the game before you do so, so that you can win every match. Solve all the quests and side quests. Try to do everything, it'll give you more experience, gold, and obviously, story. The cat potion is an essential potion to use when you're in dark areas. Dark dungeons are truly dark in this game. I actually love how dark it is and it helps give purpose to the Witcher lore. So yeah. There is no crime mechanic in the game, so loot whatever you want. My personal favorite tip when you're playing all sorts of RPGs is to quick save often. By the end of the game, I nearly had 300 quick saves that I deleted because I found a better save file online. Don't do what I did. I mostly did it because I already finished the game twice and I wanted to start Witcher 2 with a specific branch of choices. When exploring crypts with many dangerous monsters, avoid moving around after killing the current flock of foes. This avoids triggering the next batch of monsters, giving you time to recover and quick save. God, I love quick save. During combat, the game cannot be saved, so be sure to use combat pause to save the game, just in case. If everything fails, remember that you can usefully outrun your foes. Also, enemies can be really stupid and you can just usually use something really huge to block your enemies while you try to get your act together. Group style are extremely effective against drowners, assuming there are a lot of them. 
Now, most boss fights cannot be won by directly attacking with signs or with swords. There is usually some sort of clever mechanic that lets you kill them in another manner. So pay close attention to your surroundings and make use of them. To help reduce Geralt's toxicity, use White Honey. It's an awesome potion and it helps reduce Geralt's toxicity. What? In conjunction to this, Wife's Tears is also a good potion that helps reduce drunkness. And lastly, Try to have fun, it's a great game and don't let the fact that it's a flawed game stop you from enjoying it. If you don't like this game by Act 3, then quit, it's fine, no one's judging you. Except maybe your parents. Or my parents. Mm. And that's it. I'm not really sure how many people would find this useful. Nobody really plays the first Witcher, it's usually the second one or the third one. But I still want to help the few people that just want to start with the original. And so if it helped or maybe entertained you guys in the process, which I doubt because my voice sucks and it hurts to listen, even I don't like my voice, like the video if you don't dislike it and dislike if you don't like it, share it with your friends and if you do like it, consider subscribing to The Phantom Heart for more and maybe click on that notification bell to be reminded of my future videos. I'm Sis, and thank you for watching. This is the end card. Hi. Hopefully I sound a little better this time. I got a new mic. Kind of. Not really. And maybe this time, there's less hiss. I've used a $5 mic in my recent videos and while it did a good-ish job, I guess, it was really annoying to work with. Good thing I love making videos and it's gonna take more than a stupid mic just to prevent me from uploading. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so cause... Oh shit, I can't think of a reason, oh no. I'm just gonna end it right here. Have a great day, guys. And remember something, I don't know. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye, bye, bye.